another show of the player spotlight where we shine a spotlight on the on a player from the women futsal crazy league and we've got sponsors this time so it's Sahara Bar and Restaurant they are sponsors for the show now so shout out to them and this week's show we've got Grace Kerr from Gold Diggers hi so, yeah Grace hello how are you doing I'm good how are you I'm fine I'm fine uh, yeah. how's how are you keeping up uh, we are doing good. I think trying to get as many touches on the ball as possible. Uh, trying to do like personal training with the football or like taking part in ESPZ's adult football training. Mm -hmm. So yeah, trying to keep match it as much as possible. <laughs> okay, that's good. At least it's, it's better than, you know, being rusty, not doing anything at all. Yeah, and the fear of uh, injury, I think, if, if you don't practice and then suddenly you go back to the league. Yeah. Okay, Grace, you've been playing in this league. You played in this league quite some time ago. Do you remember what year it was when you joined the league? <laughs> I think it was 2015, 2016. Okay. Yeah, we've worked for OMFG. Ah, yes, OMFG, yeah. yes. What, what did that stand for? Uh, it started off from our social group, which is Ogilvy and Media Football Group. And then we kind of decided that why don't we just make a girls team so it became oh my football girls <laughs> okay okay all right yeah. and uh <laughs> pardon huh? no i didn't see over to you okay uh, what was your experience like playing for that team and remember any memorable ga memorable games from that time yeah i think you know we were truly the underdogs like oh. we were a bunch of ragtag girls, like most of us, if we average out of football years, our experience is maybe like four years at best. And we're up against all these experienced teams who've been playing together since they were 10 years old, right? So obviously for us, like, um, we really came with the underdog kind of spirit and any team that we played against in that we could win, it was, it was massive for us. Uh, but I think we remember one um, drawing with PSC one, yeah. and I wow, it felt like a win for us. The girls on the on the verge of tears were like, "Oh, we did it, guys! Yeah, we drew." Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That. I think I think you broke down. <laughs> you had yeah. tears at the end of the match. I remember that. That was that was memorable for me too. The first time thought, seeing that. Yeah. yeah that I think the girls they play in other leagues and stuff, right? And I, maybe they're used to winning. Uh -huh. Um, as a bunch of girls who none of us have real soccer training, uh, that, that really meant a lot that we could fight back that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct. That's right as well. You fought back from, I think, a deficit to, to draw in that game. Uh -huh. and, and you held on. You didn't play too bad as well, I remember, in that game. Yeah, well, we, we, we would like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now for this team, the Gold Diggers, who... Who's the one that founded this team and how was it founded and who came out with this team name as well? Uh, Gold Digger uh, was founded by myself and our captain, Rachel. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we just sat around and we had a few of our friends and we discussed like, like hey, we're all pushing 30 this year. Um, a lot of us from here onwards, there will be like greater responsibility in life, right? We're starting businesses. We have our own homes. Um, a lot of us are looking at children in the next few years. And we know that as much as uh, we, would, we would still love to play competitively as moms, it's probably easier right now to commit and to have one last hurrah and to get all the girls together to play again. Um, I think we took a couple of years break because we felt like we couldn't find the right people to commit. Mm. Um, and then... We just thought, okay, why don't we just check the girls if they are ready to play again. And we're surprised enough to have like 15 of them say, hey, yes, I want to play. Uh, we have some new blood and we had some old blood. And then we just kind of all came together mm. um, and started playing together on the, the Thursday friendlies and decided, why don't we go ahead and, and really give this one last try. Mm. Yeah, so good, a good start to the season as well, I remember. Yeah. You're playing at a national stadium and you beat Ocelot, one of the favourites to win the league. You won well as well that one. You played very well in that game. I think it helped that we had no idea who the teams were. So we okay. went in like, yeah, we can do this. 
and we like really went quite hard in and then we won which was a great I guess um, a great boost for the team yeah. yeah yeah so far the team's done quite well um, I don't think there's been many or any games where you know you've been outplayed or you know just out of depth yeah I think you've held your own in the games yeah. that you've played so far yeah, I think there are obviously certain games that we could have done better in uh, and we also exposed us in certain areas like, oh, okay, our fitness or our defense needs to be stronger. Mm. But I think overall we have done um, yeah, what we set out to achieve, which is to really just commit uh, and to play hard and to, to leave our best on the pitch every time. All right, cool. So is the team open for to receiving new players? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Goalkeepers. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, goalkeepers, if any. <laughs> yeah, happy to yeah take that's, on that's the position you play in, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you want to step down? You want to be a manager or what? Well, I'm going to go outfield. <laughs> oh, okay. All yeah, right. I've got all some right. outside. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it can be a bit of a you know, lonely role playing in goal. Yeah, but you can see the all, all the action in front of you. And there is that, there is that, and there's the stress that you kind of like, yeah, fully, uh, focused for yeah. the whole like, thing. Cause yeah, the yeah. moment you, and then it's in. Yeah, <laughs> one, one mistake and that's it. You're done. You're letting it go. Yeah. Yeah. On that note, um, are there any team or teams that you would regard as your rivals in this season? Well, I wouldn't say that we have rivals. <laughs> I think I know for us, uh, uh, for our team and PFC, all one, two, three, we go way back because we had some trainings with them and before um, before mm. we split out to the world and FG. So every time we play against them, we do want to show them that we have taken what they taught us and that we've improved. Mm. Um, so I think it's like there's just a lot of respect for all the girls like Nighthawks, Oslot, they all play so well and they all play so hard. So we do look up to them as not just rivals but also inspiration. Um, and there's no one that we go in feeling like uh, extra, you know, we just, we just are, every time we play, we just want to play our best um, because we feel like they are giving us their best and it's only our right to, to reciprocate that way. Okay, that's a nice period. I, I also remember um, your girls staying back to watch matches as well. You watch uh, Nighthawks play, Ocelot play, and very keen supporters. You watch it like, you know, very with much intent and you are you're studying as well how they play and then you're learning, okay, this is how they do. Yeah, yeah. it's nice to see. Because I think a lot of us don't have as much experience uh, in leagues, especially because the girl leagues, there are very few that allow you to join in at whatever level we are. Mm. So in the time that we are there, we also want to make sure that we watch and we soak in how other teams are playing, mm. like where they're doing well, um, areas that we think that, okay, perhaps we could emulate or weak spots that we can perhaps next time take advantage of. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, any player that has impressed you, player or players? Uh, wow, a lot. Eh? <laughs> there are so many. Yeah, I'm very bad with names. Uh, us, of oh, course, yeah. destroys us every time. Uh, Shannon from PSC, I think, two or three. She's come such a long way since we met her. Yeah. Uh, really, all the, the, the ladies from Nighthawks are the ones to beat, you know, I think. Uh, the chemistry, the camaraderie, their ability to just read where the next player is going to go and the moves that they make, I think that, that we, really, we really look up to. Mm. Okay. Mm. And your opinion on the league, the oh. Women Futsal Crazy League, what do you have to say about that? We love it. Thank you so much, firstly, for keeping this running. Uh, I know <laughs> okay. it's, not been easy. it's not been easy trying to get girls to commit. Um, mm. It's tricky especially when you have really top-tier teams like Nighthawks and Oslot and PSC. And I know that every time the league has like a very big distinction between the top one to four versus five to eight, and then we kind of lose the five to eights because they don't want to play again, right? Mm. So I think 
um, this league has really allowed us to come out and play, uh, especially at an age. I started at 22 playing football and I, I never thought I'd play in a league. I never thought I there'd be a league that would accept um, people from all walks of life. And I think that's what this league has meant for us. Um, yeah, so none of us had any formal training, but the league still accepted us anyways. And yeah. every time there's a new season, it was like, hey, do you want to come back? Yeah. So that has, <laughs> it has meant a lot to us, you know, to the girls to know that someone cares about whether we get to compete. And honestly, from a female standpoint, it's very hard to find a competitive uh, female football leagues that aren't like super, super high tier. Mm. So this league has really been uh, quite everything for us. Every time we get to compete, every time we get the girls together to be, all the emotions that we feel, it's, it's really down to being part of this league. All right. Thank you. And uh, I mean, the whole idea is, all, of course, to let everyone to join the league and play regardless of what level you're at. Because, you know, I've seen teams that come in, maybe not very good level at the start, but then they keep plugging away, they train, they get better as the seasons go by. So I, I really believe in that. That's why, you know. And I know you girls do play on Thursday nights as well with guys. So, yeah, yeah so that's why I know, you know, you've got some experience, some playing time as well. So maybe you could yeah. join us back. And I... Yes. I managed yeah. that this season, so <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, they're like, artificial coaches. Uh, yeah. They are also husbands are there on the weekends to mm. be like, ah. yes, 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 your husband. So we learn, we learn a lot from them, honestly, and like just the ability to to get that that unofficial training on Thursdays, mm. um, and then just to have that time to to hone our skills. Uh, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's a totally different ball game playing with boys and girls. Uh, like, girls are a bit, we are a bit more vicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you've just mentioned that you started playing football at the age of 22 years old. Mm. And what attracted you to football? Uh, okay, so we had, like, we had an office team and all the boys would go and play. And it's very casual, la. they like bring beers and stuff. So they say, hey, you guys want to join us? We are like, uh, okay. But we don't know how to play football. And they'll never mind, never mind, we'll just teach you. So they really just let us run around screaming on their page <laughs> for like a few weeks before they're like, okay, we're going to teach you how to kick, teach you how to defend, you know, all like they're really little basic things. But none of us have really had formal training. I mean, some some of our girls who are uh, the our top scorers, like Katik, for example, um, they come from like football training background. And then there's like kind of about... 60% of us who kind of picked up football on the go. Okay. So a lot of us started quite late, like 22 to 26. Um, yeah, and ever since then, it's just been trying to improve our skills wherever we can, uh, up our fitness. Um, and yeah, just trying to find small ways to improve so that every time we come back to play, that we are doing a bit better than the last time. Okay. So when you were in school, were you uh, into sports at all? No, I was a really overweight kid. <laughs> I was okay. in tough class. Okay. Uh, I only really realized later on in life that I could run, not so slowly. Uh, and then football was kind of my first time ever playing team sports. Okay. Uh, and the world to me because for the first time, I'm not training alone. Mm. And I'm not training to lose weight. I'm not training to fulfill a personal agenda <clears throat> but every time I train I train because of the women beside me because mm. I don't want to be the one that caused them a loss I don't want to be the one that slows them down so I think it gave a lot more meaning to um, the game as well all right so do you watch a lot of football on TV yes and who do you support <laughs> I'm a Liverpool fan okay <laughs> yeah congratulations first thank you after 30 years. Yeah. Gee. A long time. It, I think you know what? Being a supporter of an underdog football team like Liverpool to get to where they are today has uh, helped a lot in being part of the underdog women's league team. Because you get, kind of get used to losing, but also having hope that, you know, it could be better. Yeah. 
on, on that note, I would say that Liverpool is not an underdog, it's a giant. They were underdogs for a long time. <laughs> like, every time you watch them play, you know, right, like, they're, they're up 4-0, then my mom's like, oh, you can relax now, and I'm like, you never know we'll lose 5-4. <laughs> so there's always that fear. There's yeah. always that fear. <laughs> okay, um, when it came to World Cups and all that, any national team that you support? Uh, yeah, you know, my, my goalkeeper obsession came from Oliver Kahn back oh. in the Germany story okay. days. So there was that Germany. Uh, and also, I'm a big fan of Messi. So Argentina is uh, a, a team that we root for. Uh-huh. Um, they don't play very well as a team, yeah. as a country team, but um, you know, fun to watch, fun to watch. Okay, so if it's Germany versus Argentina, then who do you support? Uh, Germany. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any favorite player? Uh, yeah, there's like the Messi, of course. Mm. Uh, Van Dyke, who is my second husband. Uh, and he's like my idol and defending, you know, like his calm, cool collectedness. Uh, funny enough, my jerseys all say 37, which everyone's like, why are you 37? Martin Scottel is <laughs> 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 also one of the craziest defenders. So I think that's why a lot of my playing style is very defense. It's very aggressive defense. Mm. Um, and also in terms of women, I look up to Rapino, of course, and Marta. Mm. Uh, from from Brazil. Brazil, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you watch the the most recent Women World Cup? Oh uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that one, who do you support? Germany. Uh, Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> okay. Different yeah. teams, but they didn't get Brazil. all the way to the final, I guess. No, was was it USA and Japan in the final? But I think really that just comes with um, how widespread youth football is, which has allowed USA to build such a broad base of talent to choose from. Mm. So a lot of other countries will have to, it will take them time to make girls football in school normal. Mm. The point where they have the same amount of talent pool to choose from. Because mm. the US women's team, they just had so much time um, ahead of every every other country to build that up. Yeah, true. And uh, okay, on your personal life, what do you work as? Tell us a bit more about your career. I am a part time boxing coach. Oh really? <laughs> Call me. Uh, I'm also an entrepreneur, so I run a small fashion business called Lunch Money. Uh-huh. Uh, and what we work on in Lunch Money is to create size inclusive. Uh, dresses with pockets. So m- men don't really understand, like, right? But girls' clothes a lot of times if you don't have pockets. Then our phone is like so big, right? Mm. Then the pocket like this small. Yes, so yes. it got it got really frustrating for me. So I decided to start something there. Um, and also in the time of COVID, we wanted to make sure that we created a better mask because we're all wearing masks, and yeah. I see a lot of masks out there that are not comfortable. Um, that don't really live up to the, the, the kind of things that they, they promise. Mm. So we came up with Start Key Mask, which is a tensile cotton mask, uh, sustainable, uh, antibacterial, super, super breathable, and super light. So that's kind of the things that I'm doing. Uh, you, do you have it with you now? Can you show it to us? Oh, yes. Let me go. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. So the this thing was oh sorry. This thing was three months in the making. Um but as you can see, I don't know. It's like super super soft material. There's a full face wire all across. So mm-hmm. if you have like foggy spectacles, no problem. And it's also got head loops, uh so that it's hijab friendly. And for those of us who are sick of our ears being in pain. That's uh, also an option. <laughs> Alright, if, if someone wants to get that, how, do, how can they get it? Uh, they can go to startkeymasks.com. Yeah, okay. All of it on there. Uh, how do you spell that? Spell it out. Uh, S-A-T-K-I-M-A-S-K-S.com. Alright, so you've heard that. If you want some mask, try out the Satki mask. Yes.
<laughs> is it customizable? Can you make one um, with a Liverpool logo on it or something? Yeah, iron on catch if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what are some of the challenges you face as a women footballer? Some challenges I face. I find that it's difficult to get the girls to commit. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of us, our our priority in life has never been sports. Uh, and a lot of those who are very, very committed to sports are already playing top tier leagues, right? Mm. So yeah. in the middle tier, kind of where we are, I think it's very hard to find girls who would say, yeah, I can commit to two trainings a week and one match day. Um, that's one thing, obviously. Uh, and then for us, I think our best training ground is playing with guys. Uh, mm. And it's also, we, we spend a long time with our OMFG boys to train them how to play with women. Uh, there's a fine line between um, giving chance, which we hate. So if you are playing with a girl, don't give a chance. But also don't full out tackle her because you guys truly have 40% more upper body strength. So it's, it's been trying to train them in that fine line. And it's also pay, tra training guys to not react to see a girl and then they say oh i can't go hard there's a girl there i'm like come on man we can hold our own we can take hits i mean if they have ever watched us play in a girl's sleep we are like all out we don't give yeah. chance to one another and i honestly think we're more brutal <laughs> as girls um yeah it's also difficult finding all girls training sessions um, so I think those are, are the challenges, I think, in playing football uh, as a woman in this day and age. Mm. Okay, and on that note, uh, any improvements or changes you'd like to see in the women game in the future, near and far? Uh, I would definitely love to see more girls playing from a younger age. I started at 22. I wish I started at 15 or 10. Um, I wish that is normalized. I wish there was football for girls in school uh, so that they at least had an option to begin to train up that ball sense from young. Mm. Um, I'm lucky, I think, because like my ball sense perhaps came from a mix of all the different sports that I do. Like uh, Boxing helps with like, you know, re reflection and stuff. Mm. Reflection? Reflection time. Reaction time. Uh, start, and things like that. But if you are able to start from a younger age, I think there's so much more potential that we can build up. And it's not just the girls under 14 for the national team, but if every school had a sport, had a football uh, component to their PE or to their CCA, I think that would make such a big difference in the, the future talent pool for Singapore. Um, and also, I think just more opportunities and bravery for women who are, let's say, my age or at the early 20s where they feel like, oh, I don't think I can play football. I wish there's more opportunity for them to be like, and bravery to just take on the plunge and to just join us. Uh, mm -hmm. Join us, see where it goes. We promise we'll be kind. Um, and as many as possible training sessions that they are available, I think women should take them on. Yeah. I get it. Uh, I think in, in terms of CCA, probably more schools now offer football as a CCA for, for girls than, awesome. than in my time, I guess. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so it, I wasn't think, pardon? it wasn't available in my time until yeah. much later, like poly. Uh, but when you're in poly, JC, they want you to already be. Yeah, already, yeah. Right. You need to yeah. be of a certain level. Yeah. Correct. So you we probably about the same time then when we went to school. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, true. Um, I think that idea on having a coaching, uh, some coaching sessions for girls that want to try out the sport, I think that's a good idea as well. Early twenties. Mm -hmm. One one of the ideas I had when I set up this league was that um, you know there are girls that play football in in tertiary level schools. But then they fall off the bandwagon once they mm. reach, uh, once they leave school, once they leave tertiary level, they get into the job force. Yeah. Then they fall off the bandwagon, they don't know where to go. So I was thinking, you know, this league could probably be an uh, avenue for them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I hope that uh, more girls that, you know, that watch this, probably if you want to reignite your passion in football, you can join us. Join us, yeah. yeah go search schools in Singapore, 
find a personal trainer that can do like a small group class mm. um, I think anything that you can do that improves and helps you learn skills because I think when we were when we were um, learning from the boys we learned how to kick how to not scream when you're defending <laughs> like you don't learn the basic drills like passing how to fake how to uh, how to rebona how to you to step Shielding over a ball. and all that they're like really important skills that you see other people have and you don't ever dare to try because by then you're in a game situation right so mm. when you're in a training situation there really is just um so much space for you to trial and error to practice and practice and practice and practice because football as much as it is, it is a technique thing it's also a muscle memory thing uh, mm. and ball awareness is not something that comes overnight so yeah, I think training is, is massively important. Yeah, for some, I mean, for some it comes naturally, but for some others, it, it takes a yeah. lot of training and practice. Yeah. yeah, and also, yeah, on that note, I mean, if anyone wants any coaching session, you can always get in touch with us. We have coaches as well. Mm. And we can help coach you. So yeah, call, right. yeah, call me. we we'll get you in touch. we we'll get you trained up and, you know, hopefully you can join the league. So anyways, Grace, Thank you very much. Any last Thank words you. for anyone viewing this? Thanks for taking time off your busy schedule as well to speak to us. Uh, I would say you're never too old to learn how to play football. It's never too late to start. And if you've been kind of been like, uh-uh, should I join a league? Just do it. Like, there's not much time left in this world anyways, right? Just, mm. just you can do it because there's, there's no bad from it yeah there's no regrets okay and uh, national day is coming so any message for the nation uh hi singapore happy happy birthday please let us play more sports sports is important to culture yeah true <laughs> <laughs> let us get back to the pitch yeah <laughs> let us get back to the pitch yeah they're doing it in europe anyways yeah my saw right yeah Okay, so uh, for the viewers viewing this, um, there will be a question at the end of this uh, interview and you stand a chance to win $20 dining voucher from Sahara Bar and Restaurant. So do view the entirety of this video to find out, um, to get the answer to the question that we're going to post. So have a good one. Nice long weekend ahead. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye guys.